Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship and a big warm welcome to families and guests and visitors that have joined us to see. I don't I know confirmation isn't a big deal, but what you're excited about is they look good. <laughs> and I've seen them at their works. And they then I would invite the congregation to rise as we sing the opening. themselves and to love their neighbors. Save them from negative self images, from feelings of hopelessness, and from peer pressure that contradicts the values which their families and churches have instilled in them. of your people. By your spirit, renew us in your covenant of love and train us to care tenderly for all our neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As the choir comes forward, the congregation leaves.
first reading this morning is from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed. Nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So do, deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel this morning according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord. You may be seated. have a relationship with someone, you are in a state of connectedness with that person. You have lots of kinds of relationships in your lives. Some of them are because of blood. Some of them are because of a marriage. Some of them are because of a simple commitment that you have to another pe person or to a group of people. You seven confirmation students have a relationship with me because we've had a commitment to gather together and to study and to learn the Bible and the small catechism for the past couple of years. 
You have a relationship with me because I'm your pastor. I'm your elder. I am the esteemed adult role model that you look up to and admire. And I know that although you may not want to admit it, most all of you have wished you could be just like me someday. Right, Seth? Yeah, right answer. During your time in confirmation over these years, I have given you good tools and examples for how to be mature, responsible adults in your church community. I have molded you. I have shaped you into wise and faithful disciples capable of making good decisions. And let me tell you folks right now, that has not always been easy to do. To transform you into that incredible person that I have, I've had to do difficult things. I've even had to make some sacrifices, and I've had to take some risks. I've had to struggle with all seven of you as, and feel your pain. For example, remember when I made you drink those blended McDonald's Happy Meals? Now I want you to know that wasn't easy for me. I almost puked. <laughs> and I had to, that one time, I had to duct tape several of you to a wall and see how long it would take you to fall off the wall. That wasn't easy for me either, or the other adults who were in the room. Our stomachs ached from laughing. <laughs> I've had to make some of you bob for dill pickles in baked beans. I've had some of you put live crickets in your mouth at the risk of PETA coming after me. And of course, it was only a couple of weeks ago when I made you lie down in tall grass to be stung by bees. I groaned in agony as welts appeared on your bodies. Okay, so our relationship's been a little goofy and a little bit out of the ordinary, and you may think that it couldn't get any worse, but I want to warn you, most of you are going along to New Orleans next year, and you haven't seen anything yet. Be afraid. <laughs> the community of believers, the church on earth, the fellowship of the saints gathered here, that's what we entered into in our baptisms. And when we did that, we entered into a relationship, many relationships. God invites us to be in relationship with each other. God created each one of us, each one of us, every human being on the earth in God's image. Men and women, white and black, tall and short, skinny, plump, Americans, Iraqis, Germans, Native of Indians, we have all been made in the image of God out of love. That puts us in a relationship. And then in the reading that Jan just read from Leviticus, we hear that we are made holy because God is holy. And the second reading reminds us that the relationship that we have with each other is one of care and compassion. It's even described in that letter to the Thessalonians as a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. And then we get to the gospel text this morning, a perfect text for Confirmation Sunday. In that text, we hear from a Pharisee, a Pharisee who's a religious leader and who is well versed in the laws of Leviticus. And now we're going to pause here for just a moment because I'm going to ask the seven confirmation kids to tell me how many laws there are in the book of Leviticus, and if you don't get it right, you don't get to be confirmed. Go ahead. 613? Perfect, right answer. You all said it together, that's wonderful. <laughs> Back to the gospel. The Pharisaic lawyer in the gospel knows all of those 613 laws very well. And he asked Jesus to tell him, what's the most important one out of all those laws? And Jesus probably shocks him a little bit when he responds with 
the law of love. Love God, love neighbor, and love yourself. The most important commandment that we have is to have a stubborn, unwavering commitment to each other. We are called by love. We're called to love by taking each other's needs and wants seriously and then by responding to them. That's what you do in a relationship. We may play stupid games. We may play hide and seek in the dark church when no other adults are around. Don't tell them. We may go out in the rain to collect coins for crop, or we may sleep in cardboard boxes on the churchyard on freezing cold nights. Or we all may load up in the van so that we can plank on a road outside of Barabin. But it all comes down. It all comes down to our immovable, obstinate, steadfast commitment of care and compassion for each other. That's the commitment that God has for us. And that's what God asks us to do for the other. God desires us to be in relationship with each other by being just and by being fair in all of our dealings and by not being led astray by wickedness in the world and by sharing the gospel with humility and by loving God and our neighbor. Kelly, Seth, Dylan, Morgan, Dalton, what's your name again? Jamie, and Trevor. It would be really easy for you to decide that after your confirmation this morning, after your time in confirmation class, that your relationship with me and your relationship with your church community at Lakeview and your relationship with the community of believers throughout the world should come to an end. Now, I want you to know that because I do love you, because I do love you, I hope that this is never the decision that you make. I hope that as you move forward now, as young adults who have entered high school, that you will have an even stronger relationship with God and with the gospel and with those around you in this room and in your homes. I hope that when you make that affirmation in a few minutes, that affirmation where you promise to live among God's people, to worship, to share the Lord's Supper, to serve all people, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth, I hope when you say yes to that, that you are dead serious. I hope that the relationship that you have just begun in your church and with your Savior will only become more solid, more faithful, and more committed as you begin your future. God will be there for you. I will be there for you. And the people of this congregation, including your families that surround you today, will be there for you. We're there because of the gift of God's love made known to each of us through Christ Jesus our Lord.
invite the congregation to be seated, and I'd invite you to leave your bulletins where they are, and Kelly, if you would lead the way. Don't they look good? So, what do you want? Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, lightened, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of the Christ. Amen. Confirmation students, I now ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer together, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. Not together. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who is the Son of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You have now made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? That is, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ Jesus through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all of the earth. If so, answer one by one, I do when I ask God to help me. I do when I ask God to help me. People of God gathered in this place. Do you promise to support these young sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, together answer, we do and we ask God to help us. We do and we ask God to help us. Confirmation students, I'll invite you to step out and take spots along the rail. Come, you'll come right on this side. And three of you on this side. I'd invite parents and baptismal sponsors to come forward and join your students and your face, they'll turn. Kelly, and we'll lay hands on you. O oh Lord, stir up in Kelly the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs> oh God, stir up in Seth the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen.
Good one, that's that one. Are you with them? <laughs> Should be wearing a sign. God, stir up in Dylan the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. God, stir up in Morgan the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Dalton, Lord, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Jamie. Really has that, Jamie. Stir up in Jamie the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. O God, stir up in Trevor the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us a new birth. Cleanse us from sin, raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. You may congratulate our confirmands for your prayer. the Lord be with you always. Stand up and take a moment to share the peace of God with each other as our students and their families return to their seats. You may remain standing as we continue with the prayers. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of the universe, thank you for the gift of grace which is made known through your church. Make your church authentic and faithful to call to your call to love you, to love our neighbors, and to love ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God of the universe, heal your church on earth where it is broken and blend denominations so that we can support one another even when our doctrines and theology differ. Help us to remember that your generous grace is at the heart of all we do. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God of the universe, bless the confirmation students today with forgiveness and love. Strengthen their relationship with the church. Encourage their families. Keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God of the universe, as the world continues to struggle in many ways, Use us to change ideas, values, and systems that perpetuate oppression and poverty. Make us generous to share our time, our talents, and our financial gifts to end hunger and homelessness, to stop hatred and bigotry, 
and to cure disease. Lord, in your mercy. God of the universe, we pause this morning to remember in our hearts someone we love who struggles with cancer. We pray for remission and recovery. We pray that those who research may find cures. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God of the universe, show your love to anyone who is grieving. Give healing peace to those who struggle with health, including Blanche Harris, Bill Bakken, Cynthia Burnside, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. To your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we receive the morning offering. Yes. Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread. So let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And he gave thanks, and he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and eat the meal is ready. All are invited. I would ask five servers to come and kneel at the rail while the congregation is seated. God, our shepherd, you have gathered us again from sacred places and nourished us with rich food in word and sacrament. Go with us now that we may seek the lost, bind up the injured, and strengthen the weak until you gather us in all the saints into your eternal feast with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. 